All right, Congressman, first and foremost, thank you for, for being here with us today and, and talking to us. I want to get right into it. Um, as the chair of the CBC, you're pushing for meetings with the president. Talk to me. What does that look like and how have you progressed so far? Obviously, it's the start of the week. Well, we're in touch with the White House. We uh, will have a meeting with the president and his team to discuss our call for uh, making sure that police reform and the culture of policing is a major part of his State of the Union. I want to start off by saying, you know, I support law enforcement. I have helped to advocate and help fund local law enforcement in my district and for law enforcement throughout this country. There are honorable men and women who work every single day to keep our community safe, and I will continue to do that. What I am calling for as the chair of the Black Caucus and our members is to root out bad policing, uh, events like Tyree Nichols, uh, because he was stopped as a result of a traffic stop um, and it may not have even been warranted. And after being beaten, he's now dead. That is the type of bad policing that needs to stop and all of us should agree, regardless of party or background or ideology, that bad policing has no place in America's communities. Yeah, I'm curious though, right? Because there is the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Um, it got through the House, but it stalled in the Senate. So it seems like the president already has the ear, and this is something that Democrats want to do, but that hasn't moved forward just yet. Is that the only thing that needs to be done, or is there something more? Well, we're looking at all options. Uh, you're right, we did work hard in the last Congress in the House to pass uh, provisions on police reform and justice accountability. Um, but every new Congress has to start over. And so what we're calling for is a bipartisan, bicameral uh, effort. And just like we did on the bipartisan Safer Communities Law to pass comprehensive gun safety legislation, for the first time in nearly 30 years, just like we did on the bipartisan infrastructure investment and jobs law, we're asking that the president and our colleagues on both sides of the aisle in the Senate and the House work together to pass bipartisan uh, police reforms and justice to deal with the culture of policing and to eliminate bad policing in America's communities. You'd mentioned that the plan is to meet with the president um, this week and that he would mention it during the State of the Union address. Uh, ABC News is reporting that the family of Tyree Nichols is going to be invited and has accepted an invitation to the State of the Union. So it seems like he is going to bring it up. But is that enough if it's just the president on board because um, he's not the only one that makes these decisions? Well, in fact, I spoke to the family, uh, the Nichols family on Sunday, uh, the father and the mother who was on the phone. Um, I extended the invitation for them to join us as our guest at the State of the Union. They accepted. They will be in the gallery on February 7th. I will also have other guests uh, representing Nevada's 4th District. But the point of the matter is, it's not only about that day. It's what every single one of us can do here in Congress, both sides of the aisle, both the Senate and the House, what American families can do to raise the pressure on our elected officials at the local, state, and federal level, and what the president could do. All of us can do something to make our community safer. Tyree Nichols was a father. He was a, he was a son. He loved skateboarding. He was into photography and sunsets. He was 80 yards away from his mother's house when he called out mama as he was being beaten. No one should have to die in that type of situation. And none of us are safe if these are the types of practices that are happening. Um, and that is why we have to root out bad policing wherever it exists in America. Yeah, what does that look like, rooting out bad policing? Well, what it looks like first and foremost is tackling uh, the data. So in Memphis, for example, um, there according to their own reports and data, they use force against black residents three times more than the white residents in that city, that police department. 
What other police departments in America have similar practices? So this pattern of practice is one of the things that we are going to look, look at. I wanna commend my attorney general, Nevada's attorney general, Aaron Ford, because this is one of the bills that he championed in Nevada. Uh, again, we have model law enforcement agencies in some communities and model policies. We need to uh, operate operationalize those policies on the federal level. We are also looking at other principles around how we keep community safe, because here's the point. If, regardless of whether you are pulled over, whether you have, are a parent and you're worried about your child going to a local park, or you're at home in the comfort of your own home and someone busts down your door in your apartment, no one should have to die because of bad policing practices. And that is why the Congressional Black Caucus is working hard to build bipartisan support for a comprehensive bill on the culture of policing. Yes, it's about addressing issues like chokehold and no-knock warrants and a registry to root out uh, bad officers, but it's also about making sure that we're instilling the right culture in every single um, department that exists so that why we can have safer communities and respect for the profession that so many of the officers who've talked to me want to have for the job that they work so hard to provide to their communities. Yeah, and even you, you talk about across the country, but I mean, we've seen it here in our own backyard. I know Ben Crump even referenced it talking about Byron Williams um, from 2019 and, and that case. And so it, it's, it is something that is, it seems to be pervasive and, and happening far too often in our communities. It, it is, and it's about the culture of policing. Now, again, I'm proud of the work that we've done since our days with the 21st Century Council on Policing that was developed under then President Barack Obama. Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department was one of the first departments to take on some of their own self-assessment and to review their own policies. And that is part of what we need, but we need institutional policies. That's federal legislation, that's federal executive actions that only the president can implement based on the role that the federal government does provide in providing money to local law enforcement. It does mean working with our local um, mayors and county commissioners and state legislators to make sure that those policies and laws are on the books. Why? Because we want all of our communities to be safe. Bad policing shouldn't exist anywhere in America and that's something all of us should agree should agree on. Two more things, then I'll let you go. Is there something though that the that the president can do by himself, or does he need the Congress in order to act? Well, the first thing the president can do is use the bully pulpit and the platform of the office of the presidency to make this issue the priority that it is. Just like he has done on jobs and on health care and on gun safety. That's part of what I am calling for as the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, that we make the culture of policing the priority. Why? Because it's about keeping all of our communities safe, regardless of where we live. Secondly, he can uh, pass additional executive orders while we work in Congress to reach bipartisan agreement on legislation. And he's already implemented, and I commend him for implementing executive orders last May. Some of those are orders we're looking for a status on what's been done and what more needs to be done. For example, that information that I said about the rate of force that's used um, in, in certain police departments, that's information that we know, need to know for every police department. And it should be transparent. People should know what's happening, what type of use of force occurs and who is it being used on and against. Got it. And then lastly, what's your timeline? I am working uh, every single day tirelessly um, to make sure that this happens. We've already been in touch with the president's office, the White House, um, and I am working uh, right now to meet with Senator Tim Scott, the Republican from South Carolina, as well as my Republican colleagues in the House. This is not an issue that we can wait. We had already built momentum from last Congress. We're working hard to make sure it's the priority that the American people want it to be.
It seemed the, the big issue was that qualified immunity for officers. Is that something that Democrats are willing to give up in order to move the needle on this issue? Uh, I'm not going to negotiate uh, in, in, a, in a media interview. I'm willing to talk to my colleagues about the principles that we have to keep our community safe. And as I said from the beginning of my statement, I support law enforcement. I support giving them the funding and the resources they need. The lion's share of the men and women who are in uniform do a honorable job to keep our community safe. I want them to have the support they need by rooting out bad practices where they exist. And all of us should agree that's the right thing to do.